What it do fam and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe and let's get into it. All right, so if you are caught up with all of my videos and you have watched this beginning of Soundtrack to My Life, now we're gonna pick up on part three and four, which really just gets into my adulting. So one thing that I wanna mention is that um, I lost my brother when I was about 19, 20 and the loss was extremely hard as you can imagine he's my older brother and he was a music producer and i'd really only gotten to collaborate with him on i believe two projects at the time so there's just this real sense of like loss like opportunity loss um, um creative opportunity loss um, ability to learn from him all the ways that he's able to hustle and survive in Memphis because Memphis is a hard place to grow up so it's just like I felt like a whole wealth of knowledge just went down the drain when he passed away so it was very hard for me to deal with um, I remember one of the ways that I tried to deal was to use his music equipment that he had left so I believe he had a four track player with a tape deck and I remember going to the back in the shed and thinking I can do this I can set this up I can um, continue his legacy I can do this but then I realized I know nothing about rigging I know nothing about wires electrical I know nothing so I literally had to get an old school this is pre Google people okay I had to get an old school manual out and literally figure out how to wire each wire into every component it took me I feel like it legit took me like a week to two weeks <laughs> to figure all of this out to get it to actually record the way I wanted it to um, and again I said this is in my shed at my home so uh, I, I remember throwing the microphone over the middle beam and thinking that I was so badass because we had all of this room and I had created a space for me to record music now what I didn't take into account was that this sucker wasn't insulated. So it was very hot in the summer and very cold in the winter. So essentially I didn't get a whole lot of work done back there, but it was nice to have some kind of creative space to kind of go back and try to like be in my feelings, write some things, play around with the keyboard, that type of things. When I talk about the music that I listen to while adulting, it's because I found that I had to lean on music to really um, speak the things that I was feeling that couldn't say. Um, I remember at this time, my dad and I were kind of button heads and I had this sense of wanting to grieve on my own, um, which was, I'm sure it was super, super hard for him. Um, but I had to, I had to branch out. I had to see what Memphis was about. I had to prove it to myself that I had the hustle and the drive to make it on my own. So when I moved out of my parents' home the first time, uh, I ended up really just leaning on a lot of Jill Scott, a lot of Erica Badu, um, a lot of Common. Like this, this is kind of where I fell in love with uh, The Roots, and Belial and I mean this is just where I fell in love with all things Neo Soul because Neo Soul really spoke to where I was and where I wanted to go at the time so shout out to them but I wanted to specifically shout out um, some tracks that helped me with the grieving process I found that Tori Amos her song winter really really helped me um, it helped me cry it out uh, to this day, I really technically cannot listen to that song without crying or getting emotional. When someone passes, when I'm dealing with real loss, that song is just, it's not only um, um, really mournful, but at the same time, it's reminding you, you are still here, you still have stuff to do. So when you're going to make up your mind, when you're going to love you as much as I do. It's just the, the lyrics, dude, that song like speaks to me on a completely different level. I will forever be grateful for that song. 
please check it out if you ever find yourself dealing with a stressful mournful situation like that it's just one of those songs that really like helped me get through another song that i fell in love with around this time but leaned more into uh is tuesday's gone tuesday's gone is one of the dopest songs um sad sure but it's it's written beautifully the music's beautiful uh, the harmonies are awesome and again it's just one of those songs that i really that really spoke to me when i was dealing with my loss another band that i really bonded with um during this time was tool now i already loved tool don't get me wrong but at this time i just there was something about the melancholiness of the music but the fact that it was beautifully arranged the fact that the harmonies were so dope i am a drum and bass girl so anytime like the drum and bass in anything any genre is heavy I'm naturally drawn to it. Um, the Patient it, it is one of those songs that drew me in and I kind of put it on repeat because the message, the message just kept driving home for me that, um, that there are things that you're going to have to wait out. You're not going to be able to control every single thing in your life. And I feel like that was probably one of the first times as an adult that I had that feeling. You know, when you're young, you think you can run it. You think if anything comes in your way, you're either going to duke it out or you're going to cuss them out or something and you're going to get results. So hearing Tool just soothed me. And there were days and days and days on end where it would be nothing but Tool because the sounds would soothe me, the messages would calm me, and it would get me into a headspace of kind of like get focused get get game on it's, you know because life moves on you have to find a way to find the strength to move on so tool rock on it was a um, very very influential band for me at that time um and i think i've covered everyone except for the lovely the magnificent annie defranco now annie defranco is an independent artist some of you may know some of you may not um the woman is amazing from the beginning of watching her career, I was just amazed at the fact that this little pint-sized woman was like spitting all of this knowledge um, and being so raw and honest. Like there's so many songs of hers um, that I just can't even name them all, but the lyrics, they're just so, they're so raw. And the music is so different too. Because she's an independent artist, I feel like a lot of her stuff was never really overproduced. It was just kind of her in the, in the studio feeling herself you know what i'm saying doing her thing so that woman i love that woman i have seen live that woman i would love to see live again um please check her out if you haven't before um hallelujah fm 95.7 shout out to you memphis um had gospel songs and it had sermons like it would have sermons i think around 10 maybe again around 12 but you could always tune in get a word get your praise on and kind of get your mind right. Um, so I leaned heavily on that station. I hated losing that station when I moved to Nashville. So I actually ended up um, listening to it a lot on iHeartRadio. It was like one of the only places that I could find it. Another station that I loved out back home was 101. 101 played all the old school hits. Now, what's important to note about this is, keep in mind, I grew up listening to all this old school music, but I branched off and started to listen to my own music. So during this time of loss, it was extremely comforting to go back to the old school music, being older, maybe being able to relate to the lyrics a lot more now, um, or a lot more at that time, it just really sank home. All Temptations, Keep Your Head to the Sky, uh, Earth, Wind & Fire, um, there's just so many tracks joy and pain by frankie beverly and the maze oh my goodness but it's like these people had a way of recognizing exactly where you are in your struggle but showing you a way out so i used to i don't know i just dove deep into it and and stayed there for a while um because it was blessing my soul it was blessing my spirit just to hear that music um and to kind of reconnect with my roots and to kind of reconnect with my foundation and remind myself that, hey, this, this is going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. That has been part three. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Check you guys out later.
peace.